Uh, horrible story last night. Um, you know, I was, I was kind of just casually watching the news and and um, and like shooting Atlanta. I was like, okay, I mean, probably I shoot in Atlanta all the time. But then hearing more about it, a murder at three Asian owned spas. Um, eight people killed um, by who? A young white male. Um, you know, that, that's one question. Is there any other demographic right now <laughs> more angry, more, uh, just, it, I mean, just that particular demographic, white men, what them so vex for? You know, I mean, you, 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 <laughs> And that's not even the subject here. But you've been running this country for hundreds of years. Why are they so pissed off? You know what I mean? It just, it's just, uh, it, it, it's infuriating. Um, you know, and, and it, 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 I just, you know, first, you know, they're saying that, you know, they don't know if it's, um, you know, anti-Asian violence. But look, he specifically drew up the three Asian-owned spas and killed uh, eight Asian people, uh, seven Asian people and one non-Asian person. Six of them women. Um, you know, just an, an awful, awful story. And um, and reason why I, I think they're vexed, it goes back to this white privilege that we've always talked about on the show. <laughs> yeah. if, if they're not getting their way, it's like a personal attack on them. Exactly. So they feel like they have to handle it in this type of way. Mm -hmm. They have to take charge and, and do something about it. We don't know what happened in this man's background or what may have you. It, it you know, I, I can imagine there's something like somebody he loved dearly died of COVID. And if we really want to backtrack and get to the, the source of everything, let's talk about 44 and what he said. And this is what is driving. 45, 45. 45, excuse me. 45, 45, 45. I messed up, I messed up. <laughs> okay, 45. Uh, yeah, 45. I rebuked that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean. But, but even with that, um, do y'all know if, say for example, I tell Speci, yo, go chuck off my bridge, right? And Speci go kill himself. They can charge me with manslaughter. Yes. Right? So they have. Why is it? I've done it. That forty-five can say whatever he has to say, and not, you know, reap any consequences. You understand what I'm saying? Because. <clears throat> This is directly in regards to what he said, what he told the people. He started calling it what the the China the, virus, China virus, then the, Kung flu, Kung flu, and all that kind of yeah. thing, you know, and which is just blatant racism. Period. There's no other way to put it. But I believe, like I said, something like that happened, and and basically, again, the white privilege kicked in. He felt like he had to take it in his own hands and and do something about it. It's bullshit. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I've, I've been, you know, seeing periodically that, you know, there's a rise in anti-Asian sentiment. And yes, exactly what you said. No, no, it's not all Trump. But you know what? It makes a big difference when the president of the whole United States, the most powerful country in the world, gets up with his platform in front of millions watching, hundreds of millions who will now see it when it's played and replayed, and goes at China specifically. You know, the, like, you know, the CDC and, you know, the organization said, you know, to refer to it as COVID-19, because we don't want to, you know, bring a stigma to any particular country or any particular ethnicity. And with that said, he intentionally, purposely, repeatedly call it the China virus. And then in front of his thousands of idiot supporters, uh, there's a the Kung flu and everybody just laugh and ha 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 ha. You know, it's the, 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 the cancer that this man has unleashed. Well, you know, it's, it's like it was all, all always there. It was there, yeah. He just but made it, okay. it, it, he just made it okay to just bring that out on it so i mean we're even going to um i think it's in 2018 when there was that shooting at that walmart in el paso 
um, where you know somebody drove hundreds of miles to go to this Walmart in a predominantly Hispanic area to kill as many Mexicans and you know Central America as he could find. And that's because leading up to that, Trump was talking about this invasion, this infestation of people. You know, so people take that and they respond. So this anti-Asian sentiment, you know, it comes from him giving license to that, that, that sort of thing. And it, so that there have been over the past year, like 4,000 incidents of hate crimes against Asian Americans. And, you know, it's a... Uh, yeah, it, it just it, it uh, it's 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 awful. It's it's not you know we it, it happened before. Like after nine eleven, there was just you know, like a friend of mine who I worked yeah. at the time, an Indian guy. Um, you know, you know, his, you know his his uncle, you know, was a Sikh. You know, which he's not Muslim, but they they wear they, they wear a, a similar headgear, and people don't know the difference. They walk into his store, shot them, killed them. You know, so that happens, you know, when you have this animosity towards a group and it's always the white people who feel like it's them to go and avenge this, you know. So for the COVID thing, you know, it, they have targeted that, that community. And, you know, what, 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 I, what I would like to say is, um, well, let me, let me ask a question and I, I'll, ask, I'll ask direct to you, Jolene. Um, Whenever there's, you know, a, like a Black Lives Matter, you know, George Floyd, and what, people always, Black people always commenting that, you know, they're taking note of those who are not speaking up, right? Those others <clears throat> who are not speaking up. So with that said, what do you think is the responsibility of us non-Asian people um, to what is our responsibility in this, in, in these incidents to bring more attention and to do more to help combat this anti-Asian sentiment. What should we do? Be inclusive. Um, I think that certain people automatically get tunnel vision because they say, all right, well, he looks like me, he talks like me, so I see myself, I associate myself that's the cause I'm going to go for. But again, people who are inclusive don't see color. They see another human being. So every race should be up in arms about this and, and showing love to the Asian community. The same way at, at these Black Lives Matter rallies, you see every color of the rainbow coming out to support. Why? Because those people don't see color. They see another human being whose life was taken away in one of the worst ways, and they feel hurt by it. They feel a way about it. They want to show support. They, you know what I'm saying? It's 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 this tunnel vision. It's this it's this color of your skin complex, if you want to call it that. We need to just look at each other once again as human beings. We are all human beings on earth. I don't care where you come from. You know what I'm saying? Women supporting women, men supporting women. Um, you know, and like you said, us as black people supporting the Asian community with something like this. Just like how I brought up last week, the Hispanic dude that got killed by the police. Why isn't everyone getting together and, you know what I'm saying? Hispanic lives matter too. How about just everyone's life matters? You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, special. Well, you know, uh, education and it's a hell of a thing, you know, education yeah. and um, awareness because people, even if you decide for go out and you you, you gotta decide for, for do harm to somebody that look like they're Asian. Not all Asian people are from China. You need to do some homework, right? N not because they look Asian, it does not mean they are from China just like all Hispanic people are not from Mexico. Of course right? they are. <laughs> so, so, call a, call so, a Puerto Rican a Mexican and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so, do these not people do that. out there, they're just, they're just coasting <laughs> off pure 
ignorant because the white privilege allowed them to say, hey, if you look Chinese, you're from China. We don't really care which part you want to come from, right? Yeah. Once you look yeah. Chinese, you're Chinese, yeah. right? Yeah. But if you do it to them too and say, hey, our people will look, will, 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 will look white, you know, come from Europe. Then go on wicked. Some of them will tell us, no, you know, come from Europe, right? Uh, I can't I'm from come Finland. From. Uh. <laughs> Canada yeah. Yeah. From. yeah. 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 Same so, thing. you know, and, you know, even some people that are Hispanic, and you ask them, where are you from? They say, oh, I'm, you know, I'm from France or, or I'm from Spain. <laughs> you, know, you can't tell them so Mexico because th- those are fighting words. <laughs> are fighting that was my point. Words. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, even if you're mad at, 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 at China, right? You just have to let it go because you can't pinpoint a specific person that that did all of this. So you can't just say, okay, I can't find a person that did all of this. So I'm going to hurt the nearest Chinese. <laughs> you can't do that because you yeah. don't even know if that person is from China. So you're yeah. defeating the whole purpose of you doing whatever you do. So just stop it, right? Just stop it. Yeah, it I makes mean, no I think sense. It, it comes down to kind of what what, what Jolene said, right? Right. Um, we lo- look at each other as human beings, right? Um, the George Floyd thing, the George Floyd murder, uh, really struck a chord, you know, with so many people beyond black people because just the inhumanity of sitting there and kneeling on this man's neck and killing him in eight minutes and 46 seconds. So With his stri- hands in his pocket. He has his hands in his pocket, just chilling. Yeah. Just like, you know, <laughs> it's just, you, just have, you, you just have to be a human being to say, yeah. that's wrong. Um, or, you know, like when, you know, Dylan Roof walked into that church, sat there and prayed with these people who welcomed him into their Bible study, sat there and prayed with him, and then he got up and killed what eight, nine, ten of them. After that, you just have to be a human, you know. To, similarly, these young ladies at their job working, and this fool just come up there and just, just for no reason, just, just indiscriminately just start killing them. You just have to be a human, and you know. And so, I, you know, there, there's a there are a lot of videos out there. Um, of this anti-Asian thing. Like, like there's a, I saw a video like on a surveillance camera of like an elderly Asian man, like an 85 year old man, that's walking down the street on his with his cane, a young person come up to him and kick him and push him yeah, down yeah. on the ground. You know, and it, it's happening in multiple, in, in one of those cases that man died. You know, it, it, and so it's, you know, they, they say that whenever there is progress, you know, so this one is, is, is specifically about the COVID thing, right? They, they blame everything on China, on the Chinese, and, you know, and so every, you know, so the, their miserable lives, they, they blame everything wrong in their lives. They have to blame somebody. They have to blame it on somebody else. So they're blaming all Asian people for it. Um, and, you know, the, throughout the course of the history of this country, whenever there is significant progress of, you know, the non, you know, powers that be of this country, then there is white backlash, <laughs> you know, following reconstruction after the Civil War. And, you know, and um, they made all this progress you know, you know, black senators and congressmen and all this, white people responded, this is back in the twenties, with Jim Crow laws, with lynchings, with, you know, they're like, hey, stay in your place, know your place. You know what I mean? So that's kind of what we're going through right now. They, it's it's those who feel hopeless, right? And and, it, and it, it, it's a certain, and it's not just all white men. It's a certain demographic of white men. It's generally the less educated, so they're not exposed to other people. Um, they're 
economists passing them by. They don't have education. They can't get certain jobs. Their factory closed, and you know, they, you know, they don't have education to go and do much else. So they just they just miserable and they just vexed. So they have to lash out on somebody, and that that, that that's the that's the fire that Trump identified. And so I'm going to throw gasoline on that. And those are the people that you saw kicking in the doors and you know at the Capitol the other day. That's all of those people. Pissed off white people who feel they're losing their world. So yeah. let, me, let me give y'all a different perspective because I was listening to what Joseph was saying. Um, we identify with people that look like us, that that are in our you know same area, go to places we go, and things like that. We're just more comfortable. <laughs> it's human nature. I really feel like, for example, the Black Lives Matter movement, that races, different races, weren't actually going to the rallies and protesting and marching for the for the people, but it was more to be part of the movement, be part of something, okay? Because I guarantee half of those people, and I'm gonna say white people, okay, probably didn't have any black friends, okay? But the movement was going on, they felt it was wrong, and, and they went to support it. Now, when they went back to their lives, you know, day to day, you know, was there a conscious effort to be like, okay, well, um, what more can I, work I with do? This black guy right here, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I never speak to him or whatever. Let me see what's going on with him. Let me see, you know, what he's about. Let me ask about his family, what he thinks about what's going on. I guarantee, and this is going back to Chris's point, they go back to their day to day, and because of the backlash that might come from other people, their peers, nothing else will be said about it. They will not bring that up with their peers. So it's more important, I see, that they are part of a movement rather than helping out a black person. Same thing mm -hmm. goes for what we're talking about right now. We have to step outside our comfort zone, okay? Mm -hmm. Meaning, um, when we see that, that Asian person down, when they have you, step outside your comfort zone, go pick them up. Let them know, look here, man, we've been going through this. Dust yourself mm -hmm. off, hey, be strong, rebuild, do your thing. You know what I'm saying? We, we that's what we do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Find out about find out about what you can do to help them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe there can be some dialogue there where you can help them. They can help you in some kind of way. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in, in what you have going on, and that's where when we're all inclusive in that in that way, when we know each other's thoughts and and how we feel about things, that's where change happens. Mm -hmm. It's not a movement. Oh, let's march. In, in April and May and go back home in September and August, you know, and nothing else is said about it. No difference is made. So again, we have to, as a people, step outside our comfort zone, find out what's going on with people of other colors and races and things like that. Find out what they're distressed about, what their wants and needs are. Have some dialogue, find some common ground, and then we'll, we'll see some change. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, good point. So I, I remember, um, I get the first few episodes of Just Reason when um, the George Floyd murder happened and, you know, we talked about um, taking it from a moment to a movement, right? So that kind of what you said, yes, certain, it's, it's popular to join certain movements, right? Everybody's doing this. So yeah, I'll go out there. Yeah, I, I ain't doing that. Let me go out there and march with these, <laughs> march with these niggas for <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. you know so, so you know it, it, it's a moment let me just get involved with this um but yeah the, 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 you know the where the rubber will meet the road is when you know how 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 long are you, are you going to are you going to be really committed to this movement because it's not something that's going to be solved with a march as we as black people know it's not going to come with just a day of asian awareness or whatever it's 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 going to take more than that so how committed are you to that uh so that you know i i, I, I said this article the other day um how there was i think this was in san antonio uh the owner of a like a noodle house um a, a, a vietnamese man um you know again with the whole mask thing and how they've made that political um after you know Governor Abbott say, you know, the mask mandates are all. So he basically left it up to businesses 
<laughs> so businesses could no longer say, well, you know, that's what the governor said, so I have to do it. Now people know the governor said, no, it's not. So now they blame the business. So this man, you know, he's, um, his immunity is, uh, his immune system is compromised. I forgot exactly. I, th I think he had like cancer before or something yeah. like that. Yeah, so yeah. two bouts of cancer to be. Right, yeah. So he said, you know, <laughs> to come in this place, you still need to wear your mask. So again, white people pissed off. And so now they couldn't just say, okay, well, let me just go to the other noodle place who don't require that. No, they need to come and spray paint up this man's place uh, no mask, go back to China, and all this nonsense. And, uh, you know, he said, you know, he came into work and saw it, and, uh, you know, it, it just it just hurt his heart to see that. And uh, as it would anybody, and, you know, and he said what, uh, as angry as he was, you know, and he was just debating whether or not to open up for the day, um, that while he was doing that, uh, and he said, okay, let, let's go and open up. And he was cleaning off the window. Some customers came in, saw him cleaning up, saw, and they decided to jump in and help him clean up. And so that's when he's like, it's when he realized, you know, um, that these people, they are a very uh, sick minority, right? It's, it's most people aren't like this. But then I got to see just the greater community and how that they really want to that's what most people are like but it's just that the others you know um the stand out there so you know that, that's something that it, it's helpful to remember in times like this i don't think most people are evil spirited like that i may be wrong but i don't think that i don't think that is the case and also somebody said something earlier about um you know what about about education Right, so education, you know, we're not talking book education. It's just, if, like if you look, like in the, in the voting maps, the big cities tend to vote democratic. And you know why that is? It's because when you live in a big city, in Houston, in Dallas, in San Antonio, and you're more likely to be around a wide diversity of people. <laughs> right? If you live out in the sticks someplace, it's got to just have, you know, a few like white people who live in a hundred yards apart. But when you live in a big city, you're going to be surrounded by many types of people, many types of, you know, restaurants. So you're going to encounter a lot of different kinds. So, and so that cultural awareness has a benefit. So now you don't, you know, you don't, you do realize, okay, there's a difference between a Chinese person and a Vietnamese and somebody from Thailand and somebody from the Philippines, you know, you're not just uh, the Chinaman. You know what I mean? So I, I think I can't, that, that is just very helpful that the more culturally aware we are, the less ignorance is going to, you know, sit in our head uh, just because we're exposed to more. So that's why diversity. You learn diversity. in front of certain people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. So. You know, so that's uh, it. The and and it, even before the thing happened in, in in Georgia, that's something I wanted to cover because I I think it's it's I think it's really important for um, non Asians to talk about this as well. You know, um, in all the significant movements for rights of Black people. It's been predominantly black people, but we've had allies who are not black people also. I think that I think that's necessary. Um, so, you know, that's our role here. We need to be um, human beings <laughs> and, and uh, advocate for others, you know, going through, you know, a rough time. Um, and we know very well, we, we, we've been doing this for hundreds of years, so. Uh, so raise awareness. That's one thing we can do. We can talk about this as much as possible, and um, you know, go to a noodle house this weekend and spend some money with the Asian community. <laughs>